And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Jarvan Lux. This is going to be a Mage Seeker deck. This is going to be with Shadow Isles. Uh, we're going to have, you know, a, a bunch of expensive spells. That's what we want with, with our Lux, six plus cost uh, spells, because we're going to be playing some of the Mage Seekers. We're going to have Mage Seeker Persuader and Mage Seeker Inciter in here that both reward us for playing six plus cost spells. You can see with our deck, we don't have a whole lot of early game, and that's because with this uh, version, the deck will mostly be uh, just kind of passing on round one, passing on round two, and round three, you can uh, get that Brood Awakening or Remembrance, uh, you know, play one of those six uh, cost spells and then start enabling your Mage Seekers from there. Um, pretty interesting using Jarvan for the other champion. We'll kind of see how, how we do there with the Jarvans. Um, if we can get leveled up Jarvan, Leveled Up Jarvan is really powerful, and it's going to be creating those Cataclysms for us at round start, which is just more and more spells for Lux. So that's always good. Um, if we have, since we have like not as many units, but some really powerful units, we got like a Mist Call in here. Also Rekindler, those kind of things can bring back our champions if they die. We got lots of good removal for big threats. Uh, Vengeance, Piercing, Darkness, that kind of stuff. Um, and, you know, just like some earlier removal as well. So it looks like a pretty interesting, unique list. So this was a viewer submitted deck, Jarvan Lux. Um, I should I should put the donation deck up there. We're gonna go play our five games in ranked with this. Same with Vladimir Tarek. Donation deck. That's what the two D's over here mean by the deck list. If you watch any of the videos and you're like, what do those two D's over there mean? That means donation decks. This is a deck that a viewer submitted. All right, now this is a good matchup for Brood Awakening. If we can find a Brood Awakening, we're going to go and send those three back. We'll keep the Persuader. Brood Awakening. Hmm. Wanted to be able to play Brood Awakening on three. Get us like three blockers for their earlier Lurkers. The cheaper Lurkers. Withering Mist isn't bad either, though. It could take out two Lurkers. But it costs five. We'd rather have the six cost spell. Mages can't hide from me. I'm thinking they could maybe miss. I mean, it's possible. Come on, Miss Lurk, miss, 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 pass, pass, pass. Oh, they hit. That's too bad. Well, that's too bad. All right, well, we'll just block one. Good afternoon, Cabo. Alright, so we got a couple options here. Yeah. Let's go ahead and take out two of them. You can see why... Brood Awakening would have been really good, you know, being able to have a blocker for a lot of those cards. We've had a great Lurk Hand. By round four, I've already played four units of Lurk twice, including the Rek'Sai. It's not a very good hand. Five, six? <laughs> what are we doing over here? Five, six? Gross. Magic has no place here. Cabo, feel free to check out your deck. All right, so they're putting the Rek'Sai back on top. Your Vladimir Tarek deck I made a few small changes to it. It's it's up on Mobilitics. You can let me know what you think of it. Okay, because this is, well, this thing's only going to be seven power, so it's going to be a seven six. This thing will be an eight six overwhelm. I guess it's better to vengeance that thing. Sorcery. 
Or the Mafia. Okay, okay. Soldiers, it's me! Who does not know the name Laurent? All right, so that card's Rek'Sai. I don't know anything about the other two right now. So now we don't know anything about the other one card. We can... Okay. We can handle this. Barely. I guess maybe we can't really handle it, can we? Because we have to. No, once I play that, no, we can't. Because we. Alright, so we have to vengeance the Rek'Sai. And then we can. Like, they challenge, we single combat, but if they hit Lurk, then we lose. I guess we just lose. Yeah, I think I like Bastion over Bastion over Astral Protection. I, I started to have Astral Protection in there, you know, and. and Decide just to go to the second bastion. So I can't really do anything if they hit Lurk, I guess. I guess it's my only play. They didn't they didn't fix anything on top, so they don't know what the top card is. They gotta miss. They missed! We have a chance. Down to one's not dead. Words make a ruler, but actions make history. So we have to play this, so we have a blocker. A little further. Bingo. Like if I play the the piercing darkness, that won't really be good enough. AB Carter, thank you so much for that resub. I appreciate that. The vulnerable. If they didn't have the vulnerable, we'd be fine. It's them creating another one of these vulnerable things. Wait, are we still fine? We actually... Actually, we're fine now. Okay, maybe not anymore. Wait, so that thing... Eight power overwhelm. Okay, wait. Before. Ugh, this is exact lethal? Come on. If they hit lurk, it's exact lethal. And I think they are going to hit lurk, right? Because they put something back on top. If they do that this round. Yes, Wednesdays we do the late stream. We started. A little over an hour ago. Wait. Wait. Oh, right. Never mind. Alright, not exactly though. I was thinking they are going to do the overwhelm there, but yeah. Close. Close to stabilizing, but not quite. Kind of saw the problem with having so many cards that cost 5, 6, 7 mana. It's just hard to stabilize when everything costs so much. From Aurelian Soul. Okay, against a Brahm Aurelian Soul, we're going to want to have big effects. I could see keeping the Vanguard Sergeant. But yeah, I want like the six mana spells to be able to lead off with. Um. 
This is going to be a Targon's Peak deck. And so... We want to have, you know, our, our big bunch of cards against Targon's Peak. Okay, so 6-6 six, six is important because that can attack through Braum. The hindrance of having a 4-mana 6-6 six, six is it doesn't get through 1-1s, one, ones, and 1-1s one, can sit there and block it all day. Now, we do have that paired with Jarvan, so that whenever 1-1s one, do block our 6-6, six, six, we do get to start leveling up our Jarvan. So there's that. The sun is shining. We should too. Stand back. I'll contain the threat. Who's the threat here? I'm going to go with the two mage seekers this round. Constellation. Magic corrupts Demacia from within. Your Demacia is nothing like what I know. Well, that's just plain rude. Let us get going. So only three cards. It's a good sign for me. That you know, like that's not very many cards. My shield is my soul. Listen, my friends. Magic starts with me. Consider just letting this happen and play Brood Awakening. Get a final spark. Final spark to Brom. I'm gonna play play that sharp side, kill that elusive, and get a screeching dragon. Anyway. It is easy, see? Steal over sorcery. You can't outrun justice. I could not attack with Lux, but I think it's probably better to attack Stand with Lux than not attack with Lux. Bro. Hello, uh, that's Guy Freak. Hello, hello. Let's go, Lux. So, of course, the Field of Rush is going to now level up the Aurelian Soul. New thing that uh, Field of Rush does. Now that Aurelian Soul only needs 20 to level up instead of 25. So we just got to hope their random celestial card that they create is not too good. Because I kind of don't really have anything else left. Alright, we shall keep that alive. Maybe make them question attacking a little bit more. Make it not so easy to attack. Because I want to open attack next round. They still have the you know the celestial card they can play. 
But I think we want to open attack next round and not, you know, give them more opportunity to play celestial cards and stuff like that. Okay, so they were not troubled much at all by that. So I can final spark to kill either Aurelian Soul or Braum. And I'm guessing it's gotta be a this Aurelian Soul. It also make it so they don't get to play whatever that special was for zero now. But they got three blockers for my three attackers. So go get him, Brood Awakening. Alright, that'll do. Then, you know, like, we're just gonna go wide and try to try to deal the four. Looks like we got him. Close game there, but we, but we ended up getting there. GG's. How about Shunpo? For Tarek, for Vladimir Tarek aggro. You know, you can self-damage your own Tarek, copy it over, self-damage something else, level up your Vladimir, get some rallies in. Oh, you can't target your own things, can you? Why don't they... They need to buff that card. You, you need to be able to target your own things. I forgot. Shumpo, you can only target enemies. That's definitely gone. So we go round three, Remembrance. We go round four, nothing. Round five, Lux plus single combat. The Lux that has the barrier. No, we'll just send that back also. Yeah, they need a buff. They need a buff Shunpo. It needs to be able to do two damage to anything. You can only deal two damage to enemies, and that's that's a ripoff. I don't I don't have any pro problem with Bandle Tree. I know some people refer to it there as like a, a Hearthstone card, but I don't really. I guess I don't really understand why and or how. I thought, like, Hearthstone cards are, I, as far as I know, are, like, RNG-based, or, like, you know, like, really RNG-based, and it's not RNG-based. It is an alternate win condition, and maybe people don't like in alter alternate win conditions, but I don't... Is that is that why it's Hearthstone? Because it's an alternate win condition? But I, d I don't think that's necessarily a negative to have al alternate ways to win the game besides simply reducing Nexus total from 20 to 0. Having a game that's, that's completely based around best of one games, you know, which it says, does make the power of, you know, alternate win conditions better because, you know, you don't have, like, sideboards for them. Uh, it's easier to, you know, easier to have, to protect your win condition and have it work. I don't know. I don't know if it really matters which one we do. Might as well do the two mana one instead of the three mana one. I don't think they're gonna have like a three damage burns. Oh, they could, yeah, they could have like Tristan a spell. Hmm, maybe we should go on Protege. I see you have no alibi. Not every. I think that really the only the only problem I have with Bandle Tree is not every region has realistic landmark removal. And I think that could be improved upon, or just like landmark interaction. Even if, you know, like even cards like Aftershock, you know, I, I think that Aftershock's really nice. It's it's a card that, you know, isn't completely optimized, like where you're putting in every single deck, like Mystic Shot. And so it, it's a, a price that you have to pay if you want to, to play landmark removal. But I just wish other regions had that option. You know, I wish Demacia had that option, or, you know, like the other regions give you a a good not not great and automatic include not you know not like scorched earth level on every single deck but i just wish that the other regions also had uh, those kind of cards so the problem here i think we have to go to the insider i want to play lux but lux doesn't kill poppy we have to kill poppy the other thing this does is this 
playing Mage Seeker Insider does let me play three mana Remembrance after like our three Spiderlings die. And chat says that they are planning on buffing up landmark removal in the future. Because that's, that's kind of the problem, right? Like, we're we're probably going to die to the Bandle Tree because we don't have any interaction for landmarks. And it should be realistic options. Like, there's Crumble in these two regions. We're not going to be playing Crumble. If I play Jarvan, Jarvan can challenge... Or if we just attack, go Jarvan, we can challenge Bandle City Mayor. We have to play uh, Screeching Dragon if we want to kill this Bandle Commando. Fortunately, that's what we want to do. Yeah, I think that's what we have to do, right? Because this Bandle Commando just making more and more 2-1s just won't let us win. But... You know what? No, let's get let's get Jarvan in play. We can try to level up this Jarvan. A level up Jarvan is awesome. So maybe we can get a leveled up Jarvan. We fight till we're ragged, then we fight again. Yeah, and I also don't think that uh, Banal Tree is really problematic in the meta game. I just wish that. I should make a speech. There were more uh, deck building de decisions to be made. You know, like there was like a realistic Demacia card you could play for a landmark. Does like that eight mana? I guess like that captain, that eight mana captain. Does that capture a landmark? But still, that's not really realistic. You're talking about eight mana. You know, like I wish there was realistic cards that other regions could play. Yeah, level up Jarvan's awesome. No quarter. So we can kill stuff for a long time. It's just, you know, will they have... Uh, what's it called? Will they have the Bandle Tree or not? Okay, yeah, the Bandle Tree. It's, it's a landmark that says once you've cast... Um, Units from ten different regions, you win the game at during at the uh, round start, and that's that's like their whole plan of their deck because they're just playing all these different units, which is just good for just kind of you know like we have to try to kill everything and all that kind of stuff. We try to stay alive, and that's gonna be fine. Like these units aren't powerful enough to kill us, but we're not gonna really be able to do twenty damage to them because they're gonna have all these blockers and stuff, and they're just gonna drop this landmark, and the landmark says you win the game, and. That's about that. Let the light guide you. Especially this Bandle Commando is just so important for their uh, strategy. They, they've had a couple of them because they can continually create zero mana blockers. Good quality zero mana blockers. I should make a speech. Where's my speech? Pops, in your hat. I put it in your hat this morning. For the king! To the flag! Bravely. Correct. Yep. A landmark is a non-unit permanent. It does take up one of the six spots on the board. But all these things, you know, so Bandle City Mayor creates a loping telescope that creates something else. It's just it's just a deck filled with cards that just create another body and they just uh, have all these bodies out and eventually, uh, you know, win with that card. Haba, what are you talking about? When people find out Lulu is better than Commando, that will be the day we just see Tree? Lulu better than Bandle Commando? What? Lulu's... Yeah, Lulu's a better card than that, but Lulu takes a champion spot. Adventure time. 
So Poppy gives you Demacia, Fizz gives you Bilge Water. You can use the Banal Commando for Ionia. You don't need to use a champion spot for that. There's not like other great options for Bilge Water or Demacia. You're at three. We're gonna make that six. Yeah, it's... Shine with me. All right, so we're doing this. I want to play Sharp Sight and Block, but I think that we want to keep, like, our Vengeance mana open and, you know, like, just in case something happens here. You know, they do get that other Owl Cat, of course. Yeah, you want three Fizz, because with three Fizz, you, you only need to draw one, yes, but you still increase your likelihood of drawing one. It's... You know, when you only play two, you're you're probably not drawing one. It's an important card to draw because Bilgewater is a really difficult region to get. Demacia! To the flag! How dare they? We have to just continually try to outgrind them. But there we go, that's game. Ours is but to do and die. So good game, opponent. That's exactly what you want to do as Battle Tree. Tend to the wounded. And pray for the fallen. You have to hit with an elusive. It's very easy to hit with an elusive. Zillion Zig. So again, another landmark deck. This is going to be an arsenal deck playing Bandal City. And so we do have hard removal, so that's good for killing the arsenal. I think we're going to keep one Vile Feast and send the rest back. Um, I don't know exactly how aggressive they're going to be. You know, like, they are a Ziggs deck and they're playing Bandal City. Those two things usually mean kind of aggressive. So I was considering keeping both Vile Feast, but Zillion not as sense. aggressive, so. Didn't go with both. That card is too good. Endless Devout's always the... It's like, diff so different cards have like different non-champions that are like the, the best card for them to see that improve the win rate of their deck a lot. Discipline. Uh, like Twisted Catalyzer in Darkness and Endless Devout in, um, in this region. Or like, you know, in these kind of decks. There's getting that Sarcophagus enables a lot of things, especially the Desert Naturalist. Hmm. Well, I didn't like the first, so I definitely don't like the second. It's not too bad though, we have a lot of options. I'll just go this way. We'll wait on Remembrance. Pokey stick. 
Good. Good job, Jarvin. So I could have attacked with the Vanguard Sergeants as well. They would have blocked the Endless Devout again, and it would have just started their countdown. We would like to see some of our hard removal spells. We do have three Vengeance in the deck, and we want something like that for the Arsenal, because as we know, the Arsenal is the scariest card. Alright, so that's great for us. They did not do that correctly because, you know, now they, they completely burn the Restore Devout, so that's great for us. Um, could Withering Mist. We don't really need to. We just don't really have anything else to do, but it's, it's only two mana that we're passing up. They're passing up one mana. Playing the Mage Seeker Persuader, and now we'll try this for Demacia. Get some healing on our units. Stand strong. Okay. Let's go with you on the 5 4, you on the 2 4. And the rest of you all just kind of attacking. Okay, definitely a very good round. I'd say the like where we're at, we get this cataclysm. We've already played two Desert Naturalists? Yeah. So it's not super likely they have more Desert Naturalists. For our king. No quarter. Only nickel and dimes over here, no quarters. I just can't wait! Here we go! Trust me! I know what I'm doing! Okay. Maybe a little single combat over there. We're looking good. Did somebody say explosives? Maybe just do single combat over here. Still looking good. Four damage. All right, you got me. Awesome. All right, two and two. GGs. All right, we got Sivir action. Always a good deck, especially this card right here. Action. This is definitely a top five champion in the game. Action. Hard to send anything back. We're gonna have round three remembrance, round four insider, and then we, you know, have like a sharp sight plus something on round five. We have three, four, five, six. Scores to settle, to well, kill. You know how it is. 
<laughs> Just kidding, I know it's not over yet. But... Action makes it feels like that. Alright, now we go get Screeching Dragon. Screeching Dragon. Let's friend the moose. We're not taking it. Oh We're man. Taking it back. <laughs> this thing's already counting down. It's already. Uh, all right, I guess we'll try that plus sharp sight. Try to kill this Akshan. I guess I could have scout attacked with the moose first. Yeah, I guess I should have done that. Do it. Quick hands make quick work. All right, holding on to the two sharp sight mana for these other things. So you have to think that they have cards like... Okay, they had Sivir. I was going to say you have to think that they have... You know, maybe like Merciless Hunter. Something like that. Like that they just passed. They want me to play something first. A card that is good against Sivir normally is Jarvan. We'll see how that works. Hopefully that works pretty well. That was a good card to have, that conserved strike. Please work. Alright, good. They didn't have a pump spell. I made them use their pump spells earlier. And so that really paid off saving my spell mana. And not using that sharp sight earlier. Paid off getting to kill that Sivir. I know what I want. Contain the arcane. I've got your back. The Demacian soldier is worth ten foes. It's a living. So we're gonna try the same thing again. Jarvan attacking. Yep. Strike down the corrupted. Ours is but to do. Now we have leveled up Jarvan. Shield up. Another concerted strike. Where are you at? Twenty-eight. So the first one is hits a barrier, though, right? So this should work, keeping this alive. But still. They're just going to trade. Oh, now they don't even trade. Yeah, that hurts. These concerted strikes really hurt. So the good news, of course, is we have more bodies in play than they do. They still have the best card with Sivir. Are they doing that? Are they casting that? Because I guess if they cast theirs, I have to cast mine. Yeah, so we should cast ours. Um, yeah. Courage, soldier. The problem with playing the Screeching Dragon is it allows them... Oh, okay. 
It allows them to play the Waking Sands, but they didn't do that. Strength and grace, beauty in the play. I fight for the fallen. My sword is yours to command. So only one card we don't know about. We got a good board right now. It could have just, uh, you know, this, the spell shield if they attack with it. Magic stops with me. No sympathy for sorcery. I don't think they're gonna have judgment, right? The absolver. Why did they pump up the Sivir? The last card a rally? What's behind the story you think? Deadly traps, angry guardians, bunch of gold. Again, if I play like Remembrance first, they get to play the Waking Sands for a blocker. Aw, Green Fang Warden. Dark is worthless. We are what we do. I don't need rules to know good from bad. All right, gonna go ahead and get rid of the action. Even though it does give them a countdown for the Warlord's Horde. Great draw. Alright, that'll do. And we are 3 and 2. GG's. So yeah, those four mana six sixes, just having a whole bunch of those, they were just really big. They were they were awesome against our opponent's deck. But even the Jarvins, the Jarvins really did uh, pull their share because they forced a lot of resources from the opponent. They were challenging the Sivers. Jarvan does match up really well against Sivir, and even though they had Concerted Strikes for each one, you know, like one of them took down a Concerted Strike plus a Sivir, you know, the other one got that other Concerted Strike out of their hand, and just let us, let our, uh, you know, four mana six sixes just kind of run wild. So not too bad of a showing. Three and two in ranked with this Lux Jarvan deck. You know, it's something that looks a little different. It looks a little odd, but it can be powerful, you know, playing just expensive cards. If if you can stabilize, that's the thing. We saw that against the very first Lurker deck that's not always easy to stabilize, and sometimes you have too many expensive cards in hand. But if you're able to stabilize those powerful cards, those expensive cards can be powerful. Cool little deck here. Jarvan Lux Mage Seekers. All right, so those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And as always, leave those comments and let me know what you think of the deck. And if you try out the deck yourself, let me know how it goes for you. Hopefully, uh, you know, it hopefully it does some good work for you if you try it out, if you're looking for a little spooky Lux action. But that's going to be it for Jarvan Lux. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.